guys. <laughs> I'm here with my friend Jane. I haven't seen her in a while. I used to go to university with her. She's one of my best mates at uni, so it's really nice to see her again. Today we're catching up, and we thought it'd be a really good opportunity to actually film and shoot a video. We came across the idea of doing a tour of a Korean grocery. So we're out here in Lipcomb at one of the more famous and largest Korean grocers in Sydney, and it's called Fresh Asiana. Uh, there's a big airline in Korea called Asiana Airlines. So I'm assuming that's where they got it from. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna take you on a tour. Jane's gonna show us her favorite things to eat. She's gonna go into depth about the things that she's eaten throughout her childhood, uh, growing up in a Korean family. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please leave a like down the bottom to let me know that we're doing a good job for you. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, it really helps me grow and reach more people. Thanks for watching, let's go. Samjang, which you use for K barbecue at home, but technically you should be making your own with a combination of gochujang and tanjang and other ingredients. But if you just want to have it easy, you just get stuff like this. We've got one side full of fresh vegetables that you'd find at any Asian grocery, really. Got some vegetables Korean here stuff. that they use a lot in Korean barbecue. So you see lettuce, gorilla leaves, mushrooms, more mushrooms. This is ganip, which is um, krilla leaves or sesame leaves that you can have with K barbecue. Put one of these, put one of the sliced radish um, sammus on it, and then whatever meat choice on top, a bit of samjang, wrap it up and have it in one. What's so special about these ones compared to lettuce? I just like the really strong flavour to it. You have to try it to know, but um, I've got Kevin hooked on this. <laughs> it sort of has like a picklish taste to it. Yeah. Um, um, even though it's a fresh leaf. We've got a whole bowl of kimchi and different banchan. In Korean, banchan means side dishes. So they're dishes that you eat on the side when you're eating rice or noodles, whatever, Korean barbecue. So this kimchi here is a normal one that you find at Korean restaurants. It comes in a little side dish. It's made out of pickled cabbage. And then you've got ones that are more radish in little cubes. Pickled in the same way as normal kimchi. In the pickled perilla leaves, you can have this with K barbecue as well. Um, or as just a normal panton with rice too. So this is kind of the OG brand did kimchi um, called Chongkatsu. I'm not sure if it's the same brand as the ones that they sell in Korea but they've got pretty high standard kimchi because I think Chongkatsu kind of has that um, meaning of traditional family like lineage kind of thing so you'll find a lot of restaurants that say like a surname and then Chongkatsu or something Chongkatsu um, and this particular brand is just chongkatsu on its own um, for kimchi. Have any of you guys watched Itaewon class before, the Korean drama? Doesn't that look familiar? If you look behind us, you can see all of this meat that you can buy for Korean barbecue and Korean style hot pot. Let's have a look. A lot of these um, meat packages are local butchers that um, sell their products to these big supermarkets. Hans is one new DFO, new Homebush in Olympic Park. I think Kujip Gogi might be near Kamsi um, from memory, but my favorite, uh, my family's favorite is Sungine, which I have no idea where they are, but we just get it from the supermarkets. What does moisture infuse mean? I have no idea, but it tastes good. <laughs> you can cook it and you don't really need salt or any other samjang, you can just eat it from the grill and it tastes pretty good. This is pickled radish um, that you can have with cream barbecue. So usually you have a bit of some lettuce leaves or acrylic leaves and then you can put a little one of that one on top and then the meat and wrap it up as well. And these are the actual grills that you can place on top of the gas stove top um, and you can do Korean barbecue at home. It's just pretty good to have it um, at home because it's non-stick, easy to clean as well. So this is seaweed or called biok. Um, you might have seen in Korean dramas where they have biok cook for someone's birthday. That's because the mother when they give birth need to supposedly have biok to make it healthier for her. So yeah, that's all the different variety of bioks that you can buy to make biok guk. Um, but I personally just like this one because it's all cut up for you and you just need to follow the instructions to make it at the back. This is a DIY kit for samgak kimbap. Similar to a Japanese onigiri, but you can find it in Korean convenience stores. You can make your own with this little mold here. The mum used to make this a lot for our lunch ramen section. Isn't like ramen like very big in Korean culture? Because like everyone's 
fun pour so they just eat ramen. Yeah, because it's convenient. You pretty much just pour boiling water in it. This is one of the it's most famous and OG ones, Shin Ramen. It's quite spicy, so even a lot of Koreans don't really like this one. Oh! This is a seaweed soup in an instant version. Uh. So if you're really not bothered, you can just have this one as well. If you have a little bit of extra time, it's better to have the, these type of ramen instead of cock noodles. It just tastes a lot nicer. <laughs> you can cook it on the stovetop, add a few extra ingredients, whereas with cock noodles, you can't really like add an egg in there because it won't cook. Which I'm sure everybody knows this one here. Uh, it's the fire noodle challenge one. Personally, I can only have like half of it. It's too spicy. This is pretty old school as well. Um, one of Dad's favorite ramen. It's more of a seafoody type of flavor. Um, it's the same company as Shin Ramen, mm -hmm. but not as spicy. Spicy miso taste. And for people who can't take spice, this is the best option. Jin ramen. My name. <laughs> <laughs> and this is pibimmyeon, which is ramen without like the soup. It's a spicy noodle. It's cooked without a broth. Similar to naengmyeon in a way that you can find it at restaurants as well. You usually have it after K barbecue. When it comes to jajangmyeon, which is black bean noodle, this is the best one. Trust me. I made a heat for this one. This one comes really close to the actual thing that you get in restaurants. Very tasty. I'm thinking about making a video eating it at some stage, but you pretty much cook it just like you do in instant noodles. Um, you cook it in a pot. You pour the black bean sauce into the pot afterwards, but it comes out really nice. It feels like you're eating restaurant quality food. This is good stuff. And this is one of my favorite Korean snacks, which is pop pok. It's a very thin pancake um, with lots of sweet stuff inside. This is an instant version that you can make at home yourself. I don't think there's a hot dog place in Sydney. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so this is the closest thing you can get in Australia um, where it's pretty much a ready to make mix with the filling inside as well. And the instructions are very simple too. So all of you K-drama fans out there will know if a character is sick they'll have um, Ponjuk which is a company that always sponsors dramas um, in the form of PPL. These are just instant ready to eat chooks which are pretty much porridge. I believe you just might crave it. This one. This one's my favorite. Chook or porridge is something you usually eat when you're sick. So you don't want anything that's too heavy or too flavorful. Span's pretty big in Korea so they've got their own like brands as well. You can have it just kind of cooked with rice and a little fried egg or something. But you can have it in Fuleji as well. Pro tip, if you like tteokbokki, which is Korean rice cake in the spicy sauce, you can get, this one is pretty much a sauce and then you can cook the rice cakes by itself. Throw this sauce in instead of doing it yourself and you'll get something that's really similar to good restaurant quality stuff. This one's tteokbokki with cheese. Guess when you cook it, the cheese melts out of the rice cake. Snack time. This is kind of old school as well. Similar to um, chocolate pie in a way but doesn't have the marshmallow filling in the middle. I preferred this when I was young. Both are yummy. Chocolate coated cake. Um, quite soft. Um, you can have it with milk as well. That's the other chocolate cake. Choco pie. I think a lot of people have eaten that one before as well. It's better when it's um, frozen. This is pepero. Um, in Korea the 11th of November is called pepero day. Um, it's just a commercial tactic to sell more of these. But pretty much, these are like the Korean version of Japanese pokki, which is right up here. Both brands have a lot of flavors. Um, it's the original almond, cookies and cream. Um, and there's also this one, which is kind of flipped inside out, where the chocolate's in the middle. These two are pretty good Korean chocolate brands. First one's Grana, which is a really old one, but my parents used to have it when they were young as well. Crunky is from the same brand, but it's a really crunchy chocolate. These ones are famous in Korea. I remember when me and my girlfriend went to Seoul, and we were in a place called Myeongdong, and there was a shop back then that sold these, and they were packed every single day. But they sell almonds in different flavorings. Uh, so you got honey butter, you got things like wasabi, baked corn, cooking the cream. These are like 
rice crackers. Old grandpa's making them on the street sometimes. I don't think there are a lot of people left who make it the traditional way. Corn or something goes in it. It's like popcorn where they put it into this little thing here and um, it like pops and this comes flying. <laughs> oh, it's not that nice though. It's quite bland. So a lot of um, like old people like it because it's not too salty or sweet. This one's my all-time favourite. They're like little puff pastries with chocolate inside of them, but I don't know, I remember growing up with these. Really, really tasty. This is a small packet, but they've got a... They usually have a bigger one, which I can finish in one sitting as well. Really good. You should try these as well. They're perla leaf pancakes. Um, perla leaves go well with cake barbecue, but they're also really nice um, when they're slightly coated and fried. Yeah. But you've also got normal seafood pancake on the side too. Lots of pre-made. This is omuk, which is Korean fish cake. Um, you might have seen these in um, Pujang Matcha's in Korea, where it's like an outdoor little street vendor where they've got that um, kind of boiling in a little broth. Um, and it's really nice if it's win if it's cold day or if it's a winter's day. And I think they're like 50 cents each or something yeah. in Korea. Um, in Sydney, it's like three dollars each. <laughs> in Sydney, it's three dollars each or nine dollars ten for twenty, and you can make your own. The thing I loved about eating these in Korea was when you stand outside the street vendor um, and everyone's just eating it, you get a cup as well and the cup you can fill with broth uh, from cooking the fish cake and you can get unlimited refills of that broth so on a really cold winter's day it really warms up your body. You can get all these frozen dumplings as well or in Korea they call it mandu um, and you can get it with prawns, with pork, all sorts of stuff, kimchi we have bloody got a Korean fire thing for everything. This one's um, naengmyeon yuksu, which means um, naengmyeon broth. So naengmyeon's cold noodles that you might find in some Korean restaurants. And they've got a DIY ready to go, ready to bake version. They just sell little packets. This is probably enough for five or six servings. They've got individual packets in there that you can um, freeze or keep in the fridge to keep it nice and cold while you prep the noodles. And you just pour the broth over the top. Add a few ice cubes and eggs, and you've got naengmyeon. Little mini hot dogs, or hot dog is currently in trend. There's one Myeongnam hot dog or Mr. Hot Dog in Strathfield as well, where they sell the Korean style. I think it's their franchise, perhaps. Um, but these are just the ones that you can get um, in the supermarkets. You can cook them in an air fryer or whatever it says on the instructions. But they're pretty good. They've got normal versions or ones with cheese in it. They've also got the actual Mr. Hot Dog ones at the top there too. So they're probably just some individual bing soup. Like um, the shaved ice dessert that you can find in a lot of Korean cafes these days. The melon version, I haven't tried this one myself. But this one's really, really, really old, original, just shaved ice, red bean, and a bit of rice cake. This is really good. More melon, chocolate. Mm. And this is my all-time favorite ice cream, Korean ice cream, um, which is called Tori Sanyang. It's a coffee icy ice cream, and you can cut it in half and share it. So mum used to always get me to share one with my sister. Um, and it's great because um, when I was young, mum never allowed me to have coffee. So this was kind of like coffee for me. So Jane has this obscene ability to make you crave any Korean thing that she talks good about. So <laughs> we bought it and we're gonna have a try. so much for watching i want you all to comment down below and thank jane here for giving us a tour of fresh ashana um, and telling us all about the stories of how she grew up with some of the products that they sell if you enjoyed today's video please remember to give a like down the bottom and subscribe to my channel uh, for more videos like this and more eating videos more videos around sydney can't wait to show you guys more stuff and i've got heaps of content planned so see you guys soon